Good morning everybody and welcome to Denmark. We're starting our tour of uh, Norway. Uh, gonna head up uh, from here and uh, we're gonna start in Denmark. We're flying from uh, Sondeberg up to Copenhagen on this flight. Next one I think we're going into Sweden and then from there up to uh, Norway and then up the Norwegian coast. We'll be in the Twin Otter, as you can see here. I see uh, Pat and Nick over on the other side. And they're Twin Otters. The weather is very windy. Low cloud, definitely an IFR flying day. To everybody in the chat, hello. Uh, good to see you all. Gav, Brian, Nick, and Pat. And uh, interesting to note, I was just reading uh, before the stream started that uh, They've uh, released well on the 29th of uh, January today. Um, they're going to release the release date for the new uh, velocity for VATSIM. So that is definitely good news. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. Anyway, we are flying the old Wittero colors for this series. We'll be flying up north um, into Norway, so I figured it'd be appropriate given the uh, old aircraft flying the old colors. And uh, Brian, thanks for the well wishes for the flight. Should be good. It's about a hundred and something miles. Uh, I think it's 98 miles direct line, 106 miles flying. Uh, we are. Well, let's hop on board the aircraft first and get out of the wind. We can still hear it inside. Let me just quickly bring up our path. So here we are down here in the southeast corner of Denmark. We're going to take off, make a right-hand turn, arc around. We're going to fly up to uh, uh, Tudlow here. And then we're going to fly along. We're going to pick up the uh, arrival. And basically we're going to fly uh, to the north of the airfield and uh, loop around and come in for the ILS on runway 22 right. Uh, weather currently for us uh, here is windy, as you can see, and uh, a lot of low cloud in the area. I'll put the uh, current weather into the chat. And according to uh, the briefings, it is IFR over in Copenhagen. So we'll have to deal with that when we get there as well. So for now, let's uh, move to the back of the airplane. Since there is no uh, flight crew on these small little hoppers, the uh, door shut. There we go. And we can get ourselves ready to go. All right, so get the control lock out of the way. And uh, oh, they've made that uh, not as drawn out a sound. So let's get the uh, batteries and masters up and running. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to put in our flight plan. Actually, we're going to go direct to Copenhagen and we're just going to uh, fly. If we look at the, uh, the ILS actually for Copenhagen. I'll just bring that up quickly. You can see it's a teardrop approach. So we're going to fly direct in uh, to the uh, CAS VOR. And then we will come up, do the loop around, and come in for the landing. So I'll put in the Copenhagen. 
uh, which is uh, Charlie, or sorry, Echo, Kilo, Charlie, and Hotel. So we'll enter and enter. There we go. And now we're going to go to go. We're going to go to go. We're going to go into our procedures. We're going to uh, select our arrival. And we are going in on the HUD L to Charlie. There we go. Tud L to Charlie. Hit enter. Uh, transition at none and runway. Two to right is correct. Uh, and we will load that in. And our approach will be the ILS. Not that one. For two to right, and we will be transitioning at CAS, which is the VOR. So that is correct, and we will load that. All right. So our flight plan is in. And we're all set. So let's go through our before start checklist. So parking brake is set. Fuel switches are set to normal. Fuel selector is set to normal. Boost pumps are off. Radios, while well, they're on, we turned them on for uh, while we were doing this. Cabin lights and sign. Passengers are aboard. We have uh, four people on board today. So no smoking. Fasten seatbelt signs are on. Uh, beacon light. We'll call it position light is on. Pedo heat is off. Generators are off. Flaps are confirmed up. Props are in feather and fuel is off. Power levers are in idle. Ignition switch is confirmed in a normal position. Battery is on. Fuel quantity is checked. And fuel quantity is good. So let's get her up and started. Right engine boost, boop, right engine boost pump coming on. And starting engine, uh, right engine. <laughs> And adding fuel and minimizing my nav chart. Thanks, Pat. That's what happens when I forget to look over the side of the screen or my other monitors on the other side. So, engine is up. We've got torque, we've got pressure, fuel pressure, oil pressure, and everything is good there. So, I'll get up uh, the engine on the other side. Boost pump coming on, starting left engine. And adding fuel. Yeah, hi Kenneth. Yeah, I got the map off the screen now.
All right, both engines are now up and running. We have good oil pressure, good oil temperature. We have fuel flow on both and everything is good. So engine's coming up into the low idle position or the props coming up. Prop RPM is increasing. It's all good. So power levels are good. Generator switches are coming on. Generators are producing. Warning lights are off. Engines all look good. Radios are on. Transponder is on standby. Autopilot. We're going to 9,000 feet today for our flight level. So that is set. We'll uh, come up for our caution lights. So the anti-collision lights are on. Taxi light will come on. Generators are on. Bleed air left and right are on. Emergency lights are armed. And windshield heat is now on. Altimeters, we will set our altimeter uh, 1013. Altimeter is set. And all our warning lights are on. Uh, no, I didn't download the fire truck. This uh, scenery is uh, from flightsim.to. It's uh, freeware custom scenery. The whole airport's been redone, including. Uh, fire hall, the fire truck, the hangars, the aircraft sitting over there. And there's another one over there. It's all uh, bonus scenery. Alright, so we are ready to taxi out. We're going to have to uh, backtrack a bit. Uh, we're taking off on uh, runway 32. It's going to give us a bit of a bit of a left cross when we take off, but we're going to taxi out and then taxi down. So, parking brake coming off. Let's come forward on the power. Do a quick brake check. Brakes are working. The other thing we're going to do is check our gyros as we turn, make sure everything is uh, rotating the way they should. Everything is looking good. We'll see it when we go around the corner here. We should get our compass and everything rotating. All the gyros are moving. All right. Come to a quick halt, do our final check. So flaps going to flaps 10. They are selected. Vanning lights coming on. Uh, strobe light is on. And propeller is going full forward. Alright, brakes release. We're going to taxi down. down to the end here. And we'll get ready to go. All 
very nice livery done. I love the rust uh, marks on the tail from the exhaust over the years. And this is an old uh, livery that uh, they would have used back in the 70s, I believe. So it looks great on this old airplane. Hey, we're getting blown by the wind here. Got to keep some uh, steering inputs in just to keep us going straight. Easier to do from the front here. Oh, looks like this guy spawned on the runway. Runway's only 6,000 feet long, so we're going to use the whole thing. See that crosswind coming in? Winds are strong. 18 gusting 39, so it's going to be a bit of a buffety ride when we take off. There's the lean the otter does. Let's come right over to the side here. Helicopter taking off. All right, well. Doesn't look like he's going anywhere. He's just kind of sitting. So we're gonna move out and get ready to go. A little bit of a rolling. Uh, oh, there he goes. So we've got the low pneumatic pressure warning, which is fine. It'll come off once the engines uh, get up to a bit more speed. Alright, here we go for the takeoff roll. We're going to bring the engines up to about 45%. We're going to input some uh, aileron to counteract the wind. And away we go. Work that rudder. Try to keep her on the center line. That wind is really pushing it. Knots, and we're up. See us having a crab there into the wind. So that helicopter was tracking us on the takeoff there. So we're going to pitch up to 100 knots for the climb. Power's at 40. We're going to bring the props back to 90 for the climb out. Flaps coming up. Trimming for that hundred. All right, so we'll put the GPS is over to uh, nav mode. Autopilot on, we'll go into nav mode. And 
and we're going to start climbing at about uh, 1300 feet per minute. We're stable in the uh, climb. We're going to bring the power up to 45 inches on the pressure. Props at 90 for the climb. And we'll make our way up to 9,000 feet. We're heading to intercept our course. bouncing around. Weather is getting down to zero. We are in the clouds, so let's get some anti-ice on. So prop intakes, anti-ice are on. Yeah, quite a takeoff, eh, Pat? And we're above the clouds. So we go back up. Turn those off. Our flaps are up, auto feather is off, climb power is set, landing lights are off, taxi light is off, and we're climbing at 120, which is fine. Best climb if you want to get up as fast as you can is 85, but crank that up to 1600 feet, that's the recommended climb rate. And 6,000 feet coming up, 3,000 to go. Yeah, pretty heavy uh, cloud layer right, right now. It's not a solid overcast though. I do have to set my views up for this thing. Heading bug around. Everything's looking good. Once we get up to cruise speed, we'll adjust our power back to uh, 40 inches and 76% on the RPM. See, we are, we are crabbing quite a bit here. Ground speed's pretty good, 164, so we got a uh, good push there, 1,000 to go. It's got a uh, 40 knot push. Starting to level out now. Let the speed build up. Once we get above 120, we'll uh, pull the power back into cruise. The 
there we go, 120. So the power will come back to 40 inches. And the props will come back to 76. And there's the click. And we're in cruise power. So we can look at now. As I said, we're going to be coming in direct to the KAS VOR here. Then we're going to do the teardrop approach out and around. We're going to want to tune in 110.9, which is the uh, ILS frequency. And uh, just looking at the space ring, so that's 10, 15, 20. So we got to basically go out about 20 miles, 19 miles from the airport, loop around, and then come back in on the approach which is pretty typical for a teardrop. So, 110.9. We'll come down here, we'll switch to our nav, and we'll go 110.9. We'll click that in there. We're also going to come to this one and uh, do the same thing, 110.9. So it's going to show up on both. It's the only VOR we're tracking, so we'll put it into both. So that is good. We can come out a little bit on our GPS. And there we go. So our ground speed's up to almost 220. Again, we're getting that uh, pretty good push from the wind. And speaking of, well, the weather has improved slightly at Copenhagen. It's now marginal VFR instead of straight IFR. I'll put the weather into the chat. So as you can see, uh, winds are 240 at 20 knots. It's a light, uh, uh, freezing rain or light uh, freezing rain fog and rain mist and rain a uh, few clouds at 800 feet broken 1100 feet so we've got that to worry about we do have minimums for the ILS of 220 feet it's 8 degrees and looks like the winds are going to be increasing, getting a bit more gusty and moving slightly more westward. And uh, the broken layer is going to descend a bit. So the weather is going to get a little bit worse as in a bit, but hopefully it won't affect us too much as we fly in. Nick are both up. And it is noisy out there. We're basically crossing islands here um, as we fly over the eastern part of uh, Denmark. Not sure the island names. seven miles from uh, Tudlow and then we're going to be on to the arrival into Copenhagen. Platform altitude for the ILS is 3,000 feet and they want us at 3,000 by the VOR so we got 6,000 feet to go down. So we'll start that about 20 miles 20 miles out. Go with the clouds today. It's monitoring everything. Fuel quantity is good. Engine RPM is good. Prop RPMs. Engine temperatures. I'm going to 
bring the make sure the power sits at 40. Indicated airspeed of about 140 is correct. We're making our turn. So we're heading to Lugas, which is the hold point as we enter in. After that, it's uh, 23.8 miles to the VOR at the airport. We're leaving this island. We're going to cross a little bit of the, the strait between the two. And then comes the island that uh, Copenhagen is on. Our VOR2 is picking up the uh, radio already. It's pointing directly towards it, which is the direction we're headed. Uh, there's no... Uh, no NDB in the area. And the MSA for Copenhagen is 20... 100 feet from the direction we're coming, so 3,000 will be good. That's a big good chance to see if the ILS works and how she works in this airplane. They did the patch. We'll uh, give it a test. There's the uh, next island up ahead. We're about uh, Lugas is about halfway across the uh, little channel here. to set up those views. I'll just grab a shot over there, so that's my starting point. So everything is looking good. I've uh, clicked over to core, we're 22 miles out. So as mentioned, we want 3,000 feet, so we'll come down, grab the uh, altitude select, and uh, set 3,000 feet. Chat trolls were up early today. So one last check on the weather. Is there any updates? Yes, there is. So 
so there's the current weather. Winds are 240 at 21 knots, few clouds at 9,000, broken at 12,000, 8 degrees. Still looking at getting windier. Q&H of 0997, so we'll set that in. Since we're going to start descending now anyway. So there's 0997. And we will begin our descent. Bring the power back slightly so we're not speeding downhill. We're crossing over the coast. 15 miles over from the airport. So not a lot of long flights in these airplanes. Obviously they're made for uh, short haul, local small airport type of stuff. That indicated at about 140. We're going to be going down into the clouds again. So we'll get the anti ice on again just in case. Seven thousand, we got four thousand to go. sure what the GPS is doing there. We're going to go over to uh, manual mode anyway once we hit the VOR. We want 3-1, that is correct. I'm going to uh, increase our down rate a little bit. About 1500. Uh, bring that power back. Make sure we don't speed up too much. Three thousand feet to go. We're coming down way too early, but that's fine. I'll uh, kick that back up to a thousand. be where we get handed over to radar vectors. So 
has some to go. Heading mode, and we'll turn this over to V lock for the localizer. We'll now do self vectors to get us in. Airport's over in this direction. We're going to come up, loop it to the north. And then uh, we'll be good. Alright, so we're going to bring the power back up to our cruise setting of 40 inches. Now that we're leveling out. Course 217. We're going to uh, dial in 217. What's it? Right about there. It's kind of in and out of the clouds here. Just gonna head direct to the airport now. It'll be easier than having it take us all over the place. We'll do the teardrop. And we're going to want zero two one. So we did go down a little early, but that's fine. Learning the airplane. I'm noticing that the GPS was giving us some weird routings around here, so. I'm going to ignore that. There we go. 
that's better. So we're 20 miles over from the airport. ILS frequencies are in. Actually, I'm going to put in the uh, on field VOR for number two, and that is one one two point five. are still favoring 2-2 two, two right. Again, we're going to do the teardrop. Set up on the heading for the outbound. And then when we wrap, wrap around, we'll come in on V-lock for the ILS. Seventeen miles to go. Ground speed of about 197. So we've got some aircraft there. Airport elevation is 17 feet, 14 feet for the runway. in this wind. We are getting bounced around as you can see. Not much to see outside so that's why I'm not doing much of an outside view. Sure, uh, Pat and Nick must be uh, doing okay back there. There they are. ADF frequency here, I dial that one in as well. Could turn on the yaw damper, I guess, see if that helps. Uh, a little bit. Maybe. Hey, blue sky. Alright, we're 10 miles out. Pass over Swedish airspace as we do the loop, which is fine. It's all part of the uh, part of the plan. Six miles, and then we're going to go into heading mode.
Alright, so heading is set. ILSs are set. We're at platform altitude for the intercept. And this is where they want us when we come into the approach. So we actually made the turn just before the airport. about now. Alright, so we're on to the uh, the approach. We're turning on the outbound leg. We'll turn the GPS over to V-Lock. There's the, uh, glides, uh, the uh, localizer. So we're flying on the outbound of the diamond or the teardrop now. have to go out a little bit. Just said about 18 miles out. And we pick up the should pick up the glide path when we're Eight, but 9.1 miles out. Nine point three miles. So we might not go all the way out. But we do want to make sure we're below the the path when we come around to intercept. Pushed by the wind a bit, I'm going to alter out slightly more to the left. Make sure we got room as we teardrop out at the other end. So once we land at the airport, we're going to be uh, taxiing to ramp. Golf. It's a bit of a taxi. So we're probably going to be getting off to the right on Alpha, taxi back Alpha. Try to get over to Victor and across Victor, crossing two two left over to Gulf. It's a bit of a bit of a taxi, but that's where the smaller aircraft are going to be going. Actually, let me just take another look at that chart. No, we're going to be parking in the uh, F5, 7, and 8 on Terminal 3. That seems to be a better place to go. So we're still going to get off an Alpha taxi up to the main apron, but then we'll head over to uh, F5, 7, and 8. 
I think we're going to be a little bit, bit small for there, but that is fine. Alright, so I'm going to start uh, doing a hard turn here, and we'll uh, come in for the approach. Speed up at 140. a decent intercept angle. There we go. Approach mode is active. See as we come around and level off, we'll be on the inbound level and we can uh, start getting ourselves ready for landing. So, props are at 40. Or, or powers at 40. Propellers are going fully forward. Landing lights are on. Taxi lights are on. We're inbound to track the ILS. Set our uh, heading for our outbound on the runway. Flight slope is armed. Localizer is captured. Red slope indicators are coming up. We're fighting that wind. We're going to descend at about 100 knots and land at about 80. Coming back to 325. Holding on to that crab. Speed's coming down to 120. This pat's going by on the outbound. I think Nick's in front of him. Glide slope. Glide slope's captured. Now we're coming back, bring the speed down to 100. Established on the glide slope and localizer. Speed coming back. First notch of flaps, bring the power up, 
Want to be at 80 knots. Second notch of flaps. Third notch of flaps. Keep that power up at 80. We'll land that uh, 30 on the flaps. We don't need any more than that. So now we're just going to keep the speed. At 80. As we just have a really good crab angle going here. water. how strong that wind is. Our ground speed's only 40 knots and I'm showing 80 indicated. We are really slow coming in over the water. That wind is howling. Minimums 220 feet, full ILS. It's 2,000 to go before minimums. Shouldn't be an issue. I can see the water, so I'm just gonna get under this cloud layer. It should be uh, broken at 12 and few at 900. Monitoring everything now. About five miles over from the airport. Probably didn't need to slow down this early, but wasn't really expecting this strong a wind either. speed up to about 95 our flap limit I'm still not seeing the airport
Starting to get some rain on the windows. anyway. You see our crab angle there. Looks like Nick's going in on 2-2 two -two left. We're going to be flying over the terminals before we get to our runway. Still not seeing it. terminals. That angle terminal right in front of us that kind of runs on a diagonal. That's where we're going to be parking. Thresholds landing. Thank you. 
And we're down. So we're gonna uh, cheat off on Alpha 6 here. Backtrack. Well, welcome to Copenhagen. Pat's on his way in. Alright, so flaps will come up. Props will come all the way back. Into low. Landing lights are off. Taxi lights are off. Strobes will come off. Now damper is off. Actually, we should probably turn off the uh, anti-ice as well. Kind of hard to steer from outside, especially as she wallows a bit and uh, the wind's pushing her. So we're going to cross over uh, runway 1-2 and then work our way over to uh, where we're parking. We're just going to stick on Alpha here. Ah, oh, thanks, Gav. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Sure, a miserable day to go flying. And that wind is a howling out here. Alright, we'll see you on the next one. Alright, so we're going to cross over this runway. Right. Head down Zulu. Looks like Nick's already uh, at the terminal. Turn in here. We'll work our way over to where we're 
working. See Nick over there already. That's the icing pads beside us there. So we're not going in there. Looks like Nick is floating, which means he has custom scenery for this airport, which I don't have. Nick, what scenery do you have for here? Is it uh, Fly Tampa? I know they've got a Copenhagen out. back inside, parking brake will go on. And first thing we're going to do is pull the props back to Feather. Turn off the transponder. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Power's all the way back. And feather generators will go off and we'll shut down. There's Pat. Fly Tampa, it is. Yeah. I used to have the Fly Tampa Toronto. I wish I'd come out with that again soon. Anyway, there's the engine shutting down. Fuel levers are off. Boost pumps will come off. Kill the lights. Oh, taxi is off. Anti-collision position will get all the other lights off. Generators are off. Bleeds are off. Emergency lighting is disabled. Armed window heat is off. All right, and the aircraft is shut down. So, there we go. Thank you all very much for flying us. This is like one of our Norway tour. We're heading from here, I think we hop over to Sweden, and then from there, we head into Norway and work our way up the coast. Join us again uh, next weekend for leg two, and you can join us tomorrow for the next leg in our uh, Pan Am Around the World Tour, which is taking us from Istanbul, where we went into last time, to uh, Beirut and Lebanon. That's going to be the next leg tomorrow starting at 1300 Zulu as well. Hope you enjoyed. We'll catch you on the next one. And uh, if you want to join us on these flights, you're more than welcome. All, all the flights are public flights. They're welcome for everybody. They are either uh, multiplayer or a VATSIM. And uh, you can find information on our Discord, which I will put up in the chats right before we go. And I uh, hope you've all had a good flight enjoy your weekend and I'm just waiting for the discord link there she is I'll throw it over in the twitch as well and we will see you all on the next one till then bye for now